So keep watching for the full tutorial when I show you how to create a gorgeous arrangement with some supermarket flowers. So welcome back to a new tutorial. Today I'm going to be using some autumnal coloured flowers and I've chosen them really because they link beautifully in colour with my container. Now true to form, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I love to pick up some secondhand containers. And this one was from a local charity shop. It cost me $3.99 but it was originally from the pier which is quite a fancy shop here in the UK and its original price was £20. So I think I've got myself a little bargain. And while out shopping in the supermarket, I found some gorgeous sort of burnt orange coloured freesias and I felt that colour combination was going to work really well. Now I'm going to create a fairly traditional shaped triangle and it's a design that I have done quite a few times on the YouTube channel. It is a design that is really popular and has um, probably one of the most views. I'm going to do it slightly differently today because I don't have a focal point or a focal flower. So normally when I would create this type of design, I would have a bigger flower to emphasize the focal area. It could be a lily or a gerbera, it could be a selection of roses. But mainly the, what I've got today are what I would call sort of transitional flowers. So they're the in-between flowers. I don't have anything that's going to create that real emphasis in the middle. I did have a flower. I did have a lovely orange lily, but it's not open enough for me to show on camera today. So I'll do something different with those later on. Now this round sort of bulba shaped container is a really gorgeous colour and I'm looking forward to doing something exciting with this towards Christmas as well. And sometimes when you have a container like this, it can be really difficult to fix your floral foam. So I've looked through the studio for different size containers that might fit in the top. And I've ended up with this little plastic container. Now, I'm not really sure what these are called. You can still buy them on Amazon. I think they're linked in the description box that you can see underneath the video. But they normally come with a bottom section, very similar to this top bit. And oh, when I started in floristry, way back in the sort of late 80s, we used them a lot for table centers. But because it has this extended section at the bottom, it means that when I place it into the container, it's quite stable and it doesn't slide around too much on the top. So that's going to be my container or my, that's going to hold my floral foam into position. I could have put a section in the center here, but it meant that the piece of foam was going to be very narrow and it wasn't going to give me enough room for my flowers. So that's in the moment is going to be attached in there. Sometimes one of the difficulties of containers that are designed for home use they often don't have a suitably sized gap in the top so collecting or storing a few of these in your store cupboard is often a good way of solving your problems of getting the right size foam now behind me you might already have spotted i've got a box of floral foam and this one is called noir i haven't used this before on the channel and if i'm honest it's the first time i've bought it it's been around for quite a long time and the theory behind it is that you can get away with using less foliage and flowers so therefore it makes the design more economical to make. So the logic behind it is that because it's much darker it recesses away and disappears away and you don't have that bright sort of green colour foam showing through that we need to cover. So I've used it last week i used it in a wedding just to experiment with it it works exactly like floral foam but i did find it dried out much quicker so it would be something that you would have to keep hydrating and adding water to it so it looks like this in its dry form so much darker and um, it's called noir which is french for black and it's made by the company oasis so you'll see it here. You can buy it in lots of different shapes and I'm sure if you popped onto the Oasis website it would give you a little bit more information. 
but I feel as a sort of educator that I should explain the products that are available, but it's not a new product and it's not a biodegradable product. A lot of people again look at it and they think that it's one of the biodegradable foams, but it's not. So let's get on with the design, enough of my talking. I'm going to use some of the Oasis Fix. So this is Floral Fix around the rim of my container because that will help support the plastic dish on the top. I did look at sort of saucers and very small plates, but nothing fitted and was secure on the top. And I think that getting your mechanics right, right at the very beginning will really help you create a stable design that isn't gonna um, topple over or become unbalanced. Now I'm gonna attach my foam. So that is a third of a block. You can see that quite clearly and that sits really nicely in my container. Now what I'm gonna do is wrap the floral tape over the top. It's a bit fiddly because I don't want to put it down yet on my container because it will stick to the tape. So I'm gonna go around there once. Remember to always start your tape on the plastic base. Don't try and attach it to the foam. It won't anchor. And then with a little bit of pressure on there, that's going to sit really nicely and quite supported on there, well balanced, and I'm not gonna have any issue with adding in my fresh flowers. Right, so triangle shape, fairly traditional. We've looked at it several times before. And to estimate or gauge your height, you're going to go twice the height of the widest part of your container. And today that's going to be the width. So if you think about that twice on top of my container, I'm roughly coming to this sort of position here. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a guide. So as well as that lovely burnt orange freesia that we looked at, I've also got some fairly seasonal flowers. These are bright, what I would refer to as a bridal gladioli. It's like a miniature gladioli. And in the supermarkets, they are often called mini glads, so quite easy to remember. I'm trying to find a fairly straight one. So it's a really gorgeous, delicate flower Colour is absolutely amazing. Look at that with my container, isn't that fabulous? And it's probably a little bit darker than it's looking on the screen. The, the camera tends to make flowers look a bit more orangey. So I'm gonna start with a gladioli that's fairly straight. And this is gonna create my height and my middle back sort of flower. Now, sometimes with gladioli, to encourage them to open a bit more, you can remove this top section here. So what I'm gonna do there is just snap that off. It will prevent it turning up towards the light as well. And you can do that with large gladioli and it will give me a straighter line. So I won't have a gladioli that's got that very twisted stem at the top. Now at the moment, you're looking at the back. We're gonna gauge the height and then I'll turn it round for us to have a look at. I'll just check that that's in the camera as well. Okay, so that's a nicely in camera shot there. So that gives me the height of my arrangement. Now I'm going to look at doing the sides and an easy guide for a triangle that's not equal sided is to roughly go about half the distance of the height and then your side pieces are a little shorter. And again, I'm gonna remove that top section and I'm gonna make it easy for myself and cut two pieces of the mini gladioli that are a similar length. And then if I just compare that with the height, probably a little bit long, but by the time I've pushed them into the foam, hopefully my triangle will be more in proportion with each other. And what you will see here is my side pieces are in line with my flower at the back. I haven't brought them too far forward in the foam. They're towards the back and I have angled these ones slightly further forward. I'm just gonna move that one back slightly. So they're slightly angled forward. So they're facing the front of the arrangement, but I'm working right to the back, far back. And then you might be able to see my outline of the triangle starting to form. And what I'm gonna do now is come in between 
I'm going to this time leave the top of the gladioli. I couldn't think what it was called then. I got an obsession with calling everything gerbera. So I'm just going to leave the top section on for these pieces because I don't mind if it's not quite so straight. And then I'm going to bring some shorter pieces to the front. And this time I've cut one piece into two and then I can get the shape started at the front. So what we need to do is bring the flowers forward at the front so we have that profile and that three dimension starting to form. Later on and when I'm ready I can bring some more depth towards the back to make the three to prevent that arrangement looking really flat because if you look at it now it's got that really severe straight to back. Right, so now with the ones that I've got left, I'm going to put another two in on either side. This time I'm going to break it into a smaller section. So what I've done there is I've removed the top section. As it was, it was far too long. But if I, I didn't want to waste that bottom section. So I've taken off the bed at the top. That can come in on the side and I can do the same on the opposite side. There's quite a few of the gladioli in this bunch. It is a very economical bunch of flowers to buy and they are really long lasting, so it's a really good one to have. So hopefully now you can see that there's that fairly good triangle shape. And even though I said in the beginning, I was probably going to go narrower I've probably gone a bit wider than I anticipated, but that's okay because I think it really suits the gladioli. If the flower of choice had been shorter, then I would have gone with a narrower triangle. So, you know, don't worry if you've got to adapt and you've got to change as you go along, that, that's perfectly fine. And now I'm going to bring a little of this ready colour towards the middle. At the moment, it's only on the outside. I've got none of the gladioli travelling through the middle. So this is where I can now use these shorter pieces and the ones that are a little bit more open. And I'm fanning everything out from the middle. This is what's called a radial design. Everything is radiating out from the center. Oh, and the color on that one is just absolutely fantastic. It's got a slight white edge and I'm not a great lover of white flowers alongside um, very dark autumnal shades like this, but I maybe could have found something that was cream which would have helped connect with that white colour in the centre. But when I bought them, they weren't quite as open as they are now. Right, let's um, keep adding. So really all I'm doing now is just using up all of the bunch to make sure that I'm not wasting any flowers and I get a lovely fanned out radiated style with those amazing gladioli. Now with the couple of pieces I've got left, I think it's just two pieces, there isn't really any more room to add them to the front. So what I'm going to do is bring them in at the back and this will help create some depth and it will make your eye travel all the way through to the back. So it gives the design a little bit of a three-dimensional effect, which you know I talk about all the time. So lovely shape, lovely colour link between the bottom and I'm going to keep adding the different flowers, colours and stems that I've got in that same sort of fashion. Normally at this stage, in this area here would be my focal flower. It would be the larger flower, flower that would give me the dominance and the most emphasis in the design. But I haven't got one today, so this is a new, a new style. Now my next flower is this gorgeous spray carnation and it has a peachy colour to it. So I'm just now going to work my way in between the gladioli so that this colour is fairly evenly distributed. Um, that one snapped off, so we'll use that somewhere else later on. Now spray carnations are brilliant for creating the outline shape of your arrangement. They're a soft, dainty flower. They're again really good value for money. I've just brought them through on the bottom and they're on the top. My outline has already been created with the gladioli so I'm not looking 
to go any wider or any longer. I'm just now looking to evenly distribute this colour and this flower on both sides. So think of that outline and keep your flowers within that outline. You know, every week when I do a tutorial video or if you're with me on the online courses, I nearly always categorise flowers into line, transitional material and points and rounds. And you know, you're not always going to be able to get them. You're not always going to be able to go to your local supermarket and find flowers that fall into that category. So it's nice sometimes just to look at a different way of arranging and that's, that's what I'm gonna be doing today. It is of course the summer here in the UK. Well, I'm saying it's the summer. If you could see what the weather was like today, you'd think we were in the middle of a monsoon because it hasn't stopped raining. Lots of roads are flooded. We've got quite high winds and it's a bit miserable. But that works in your favour because it means that I can film and I have plenty of time to set aside. Thankfully I didn't have a wedding today otherwise the poor people would have been washed away. Right so all I'm doing is feeding the colour through giving even distribution for this lovely apricot or peach sort of shade and I'm trying to spread the colours out. Looks quite good at the moment. Anything that's a bit more open is coming towards the centre because that helps draw your eye into the middle and makes the design more pleasing to look at. So that's quite nice so far. Now there's no greenery in at the moment but I do have a garden foliage to go in as well. I've just found one more spray carnation. Let's pop that in towards the back. So try and remember to have a profile at the front and the back and if you're doing these traditional shaped arrangements then you have an outline shape as well. There are lots of videos here on the channel where I don't create such a severe formal shape like we've got today but strangely these very formal designs are always the most watched. Right now I'm going to do the same with this beautiful freesia. It's not very fragrant. It'll probably improve as the flower matures. If you're looking for a really heavily scented freesia, then quite often white has the strongest perfume. Let's just spin that round so you can see a lovely profile. My design isn't too flat, but you can really see how much foam still needs to be covered, which I'll do at the end. Sometimes I do arrangements where I create the outline shape with greenery first and sometimes I do it with the flowers. It's nice to see a variation of styles and shapes and if you haven't got a big choice of greenery then this gives you an indication of how you can start. Okay so now we're at the stage where I'm going to try to cover up that floral foam. If you've been watching my tutorials for a long time then you will know that it's really important to cover the floral foam. And as I'm close to the arrangement, I can see how much foam still needs to be covered. Whereas because you're watching from further away, you might find that it's almost disappeared, which is the whole point of this noir foam. Right, now my foliage of choice for today is a garden foliage. This one is called Physocarpus Diablo. It's a gorgeous plant to have. It's evergreen, so you have this lovely colour on it all year round. But at this time of the year, it's lovely and strong and can be cut. Earlier on in the spring, the new growth doesn't hold up quite so well. But now what I'm going to do is fairly evenly distribute it to reinforce that outline really and to give a bit of colour towards the back. Now, if you've been following me for a while, then you will have seen two videos that I've recently shared where I arrange flowers from my own garden. And I've possibly given the idea that I have this magnificent garden. Um, and although I have a couple of areas in the garden that are very well maintained and an area that I grow plants specifically for flower arranging, I also have lots of areas in my garden that are almost like the wilderness. So you have to walk through the wilderness 
to get to the attractive part of the garden. And maybe when the weather's a bit better, I will do a little bit of a run through of what exactly I've got growing in the garden and why I've grown it and how I use it in floral design. But for the moment, it's a bit too wet. Shorter pieces tuck down towards the front. This is gonna help the color link with the outside. And then I'm going to introduce a bit of a green florist sort of foliage. You will probably have seen me use before, but it's not something I use a great deal of, but it's going to give me a bit of a contrast between the very dark color reds that I've got in the arrangement at the moment. Just a couple more pieces. Oh, I'm all tangled up, yep. Let's just get those out of the way for a moment. And I'm gonna aim for a minute at covering the back. It's important when you've got a raised container that there's weight at the back of your arrangement so that it doesn't topple forward. And it is, of course, really important that you cover your floral foam so that it doesn't dry out. Now that's the stage we are at at the moment. And I'm, I would probably guess that the foam is looking fairly covered at this stage. My plastic dish is covered. There's a little bit of tape showing on that side there, if you see as I swing the arrangement round. But from where I'm looking, there are still bits of foam that need to be covered. And that's where I'm going to use this florist sort of grade foliage called leather leaf. You might know it as leather fern. It's gonna give me a bit of a contrast. It's hopefully gonna lighten the design a little bit as well, because it is very red. It's going to give me the chance to cover the really low down pieces of foam. I might bring a piece up at the back. We'll have a look in a second how it's working. Make sure that I've brought some down low at the front there so that my plastic dish is covered and the tape is completely covered and I'm not showing any of what we call the mechanics. Now I'm never a great lover of the fern placed at the back of the design because I always think it looks a little bit heavy. But I think today it's probably going to suit this style of arrangement. So what I'm going to do is bring one up on either side of that tallest piece of greenery there in the center. And hopefully I've got, I'm looking at the back at the moment, but hopefully when I swing that around, it looks quite pleasing and I'm quite happy with it. So I think that's turned out really well and I'm quite pleased how the arrangement has come together without using that large flower to create the focal point. So three flowers from the supermarket, uh, foliage from the florist and from the garden. I'm hoping that you've really enjoyed that arrangement. The colours I think are absolutely beautiful and I do have a tendency to quite often pink pink colors so it's nice to see something a bit different don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and hit that notification bell because that will notify you every time i upload a new tutorial so please share it with your friends and family and let everybody know that they can join me for some gorgeous floral designs let me know in the comment box where you're from what type of arrangement you enjoy, or if there's anything that you would like to see, then pop that in the comment box right at the very end. Thank you as ever for watching and goodbye for now.